Well, hello folks, uh, welcome to my channel. It's uh, January 3, 2021, and it's uh, gonna be my first flight for the year. And today I'm gonna be showing you uh, one of the more unique airplanes in our fleet. It's uh, an A330-300 passenger um, aircraft that's been converted into a uh, freighter uh, with the uh, quick conversion uh, option. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So as you can see, uh, the terminal is still pretty empty uh, with the recent resurgence of uh, the coronavirus, but we're still going to be flying uh, some cargo back from Hong Kong. So today we'll be uh, taking ship number 3344, a, a six-year-old A330 in the fleet. And it's a rainy Sunday afternoon, pouring outside. As I do the uh, walk around, my partner is going to be flying the leg going to Hong Kong. Pretty much an empty airplane. So that means uh, we're going to be really light taking off from Manila with less than 130 tons of takeoff weight. And like I said, this A330 went through the quick conversion process uh, of having almost all of the cabin seats removed so that we could carry. Uh, more cargo in the cabin and that shaves off around four tons uh, from the aircraft's uh, dry operating weight and just happened to be parked beside an ANA 787 and looking across the runway you see the impact of the uh, recent restrictions on uh, international destinations grounding more planes So we're just fueling up the airplane at this point and having a uh, lighter airplane allows us to be uh, more economical in our fuel burn. I think we ended up requesting a little less than 20 tons for this uh, flight and that already includes around 7 tons of ballast fuel just to keep the plane within trim. And now heading back inside you can see uh, the newly refurbished interior of our 330 quick conversion freighter. So it's uh, really spacious now and lots of uh, cargo netting strewn all across the floor. As you may have noticed, there's nothing new externally in the airplane. Everything uh, that has to do with the modification happened inside. So with the external walk around complete, we head back inside and uh, check the uh, preparation of uh, my flying partner, Mike, and get our clearance. Um, clearance, good afternoon, Cebu 116. Cebu 116, clearance delivery, good afternoon, go ahead. Airbus A330 at gate 115 with information, hotel requesting Hong Kong, flight level 380. Cebu 116. Clearance for request, standby. 116. Okay, hey, ready to copy Cebu 116. Cebu 116 cleared Hong Kong via Kabanatuan Alpha 461 flight plan route. Maintain runway heading, climb 7,000 feet. Strike radar vectors, direct Kabanatuan, squawk 6576. Okay, Cebu 116 has cleared Hong Kong via Cabanatuan, Alpha 461 flight plan route, runway heading 7,000 vectors Cabanatuan, and squawk is 6576. Cebu 116, clearance is correct, one ready for start, ground 128 today. Okay, ground point 8, uh, Cebu 116, good. Okay, so we're here in Hong Kong International, Chap Lap Kong. And this is pretty much as far as we can go from the airplane. So there's the tube right there, at least to the airplane door. Uh, and normally this is where passengers disembark. Uh, 
and still no sign of an end to this pandemic. So uh, we just go back to Manila, like we normally do anyway on a regular passenger flight. And today we don't have any cargo in the uh, cabin. If we do have cargo, we need at least five cabin crew for firefighting and securing the nets and stuff. Uh, but everything today, every, all the cargo is going to be in the belly of the airplane uh, under the cabin. So just wait for them to load up and then uh, we're out of here. We'll see you in Manila. Okay, so since we got time, let's just take a closer look at the cabin itself starting from the aft section so this is the tail end of the airplane where you got the aft galley you see here the jump seats where cabin crew would normally sit with uh, the door there on the left side of the airplane the aft lav and as you may notice uh, there are still some seats left for cabin crew to sit on during takeoff and landing and cruise and this allows them to be positioned in such a way that given their limited number being only uh, five as a minimum as opposed to uh, 11 when there's passengers on board it gives them a better view of the cabin in case any cargo gets loose or any fire breaks out and of course the most important thing crew rest we also use it for crew rest so for the cargo netting you can see that they're attached to the seat rails where the passenger seats uh, used to be attached to and this modification was uh, allowed by Airbus and the operator has to go to the authority to get this uh, modification approved and then uh, certified. So it's not as easy as just removing seats and then slapping on some nets. It's quite a, a lengthy process that involves first the manufacturer, uh, the operator, the maintenance provider, and of course the authority. Besides the uh, labor cost of uh, having the seats removed, you have to reweigh the airplane and also develop procedures that the crew will have to perform. And all this, uh, of course, costs uh, time and money. So an extensive study was uh, first put together if this would be feasible from a uh, financial standpoint. And ultimately, it was decided that uh, this airplane would be the first of two Airbus A330s that would be uh, converted into freighters. And that leaves our fleet with four normally configured A330s for passenger use. Plus, we've got two more airplanes stored uh, in Alice Springs over in Australia. So as we move our way towards the uh, front section of the airplane, the forward section, here we got uh, the business end, of course, the cockpit behind the cockpit door, and the uh, forward galley where normally your meals are prepared. And I can see that Mike's uh, got some mood lighting going on while uh, we wait for our ground crew to uh, finish the cargo loading process. So we're parked at gate Sierra 45 at Hong Kong's Terminal 1. We're going to be uh, preparing the airplane shortly for our departure.
Okay, so with all the preparations complete, we have to get our uh, ATC clearance again. And this time, as opposed to doing it the old-fashioned way over the radio, uh, we got pre-departure clearance here in Hong Kong, which uh, is a function of our air traffic control data link system. And we just put in all the important stuff in there, like our uh, gate assignment, ATIS code, and sometimes they ask for our flight level, so we'll just put it in there and then hit send. And after a while, they'll get back to us uh, with a text message over the same system, giving our clearance. So there you have it, folks. Now we just have to get our uh, clearance to push out of the gate and then make our way over to Manila. See you there shortly. Well, back in Manila, that's about it. Thank you for joining us uh, in our short hop over to Hong Kong with the uh, quick conversion freighter. And uh, we hope to see you again soon here on our channel. Stay safe, folks.